Welcome to our Hearst Cycles webinar about performing a full phasing analysis using the method proposed by J.M. Hearst in his Cycles course, which of course he published in the 1970s. So we are using that original method. It's a very manual method. It involves pencils and erasers and uh, paper charts. And uh, that is the process that I'm going to be speaking about in today's webinar. Uh, this is the third webinar in the series about performing a full phasing analysis. So if you've missed the other two, please make sure that you go back and watch those two webinars first. They are available on YouTube and uh, that will give you the full picture. So uh, let's get straight to the content of today's webinar. But before we do, I must ask you to please make sure that you have read and understood these disclaimers. So let's catch up with where we are. As I've mentioned, this is part three in the series of webinars. And uh, so what is a Hearst phasing analysis all about? Well, J.M. Hearst wrote a book called The Profit, of, the Profit Magic of Stock Transaction Timing, which he published in the late 1960s. And he presented a fairly mathematical approach to performing a phasing analysis to identifying the cycles that are active in the financial markets. In the early 1970s, he published his Cyclitech Cycles course, which presented a very different way of performing the analysis. He's presenting the same ideas about how cycles work in financial markets, but he presented a very different way of performing that analysis. And it's a, it's a very manual process. And that's the process that we're speaking about in these webinars. He defined three stages to the process. As you probably know, the entry stage, then the extension stage, and then the completion stage. And I, in the process of... Uh, really defining uh, how this process works in order to create sentient trader software that would do the analysis for me, I defined an extra two stages. The pre-analysis stage, which comes before the entry stage, and then the confirmation stage, which comes after the completion stage. And as I've mentioned before, the entire phasing analysis process is a very iterative process. So once you've gone through the entire process once, uh, information that you gain from the analysis is fed back into earlier stages of the analysis, and you find yourself repeating some of the different stages, which is why it's very important to get a clear understanding of each one of these stages. Now, in our previous webinar, I spoke about the phasing analysis entry stage, and we uh, performed a phasing analysis entry on our monthly chart of the S&P 500, and we identified potential 54-month cycle troughs on that chart. Uh, today's webinar is going to be all about the next stage of the analysis process, which is the phasing analysis extension stage and that stage involves working from the longest cycle that you have already identified in the market and working uh, down through the shorter cycles one at a time to really fill in your analysis and get all the way down to the finer details of the shorter cycles so that you can then begin to start uh, making trading decisions, of course, but um, not just making trading decisions. You will begin to, to really understand what all of the cycles are doing, what your full cyclic model is. You know, what are all the cycles doing in the market? So let's go ahead and take a look at phasing analysis extension. The phasing analysis extension process is a matter of extending our analysis from our longest cycle, which we started making decisions about in the phasing analysis entry stage of the process. We haven't necessarily identified every single trough of the longest cycle, and we have two alternate analyses that we are working with at the moment and in one of those analyses I indeed haven't confirmed quite a few of the positions of the longest cycle trough. The phasing analysis extension process is a matter of stepping down one cycle at a time from the longest cycle through your nominal model all the way down to your shortest cycle. 
And so our longest cycle, which we dealt with in the phasing analysis entry process, is the 54-month cycle. We then move on to the 18-month cycle, and then we're going to step down cycle by cycle all the way down to the five-day cycle, which is the shortest cycle that we're going to be dealing with using end-of-day data. So let's get started. What we do is initially work with our monthly chart. And as you know, I've got two possible analyses here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with one of them and then uh, work on the other one. And we can compare some of the situations that arise as a result of working with both analyses. There are going to be uh, some interesting lessons to learn, I believe, from looking at both of these analyses. So let's get started. We're going to work with our monthly chart. Before we move on to the shorter time frame charts, we're going to need a strip of paper. So here's another strip of paper, and I label it 18-month cycle, because, of course, that is the cycle that we're moving on to. And then I take a look at my initial cyclic model, and I see that the initial cyclic model gives me an expected wavelength of 17.9 months, possible wavelengths of 61 weeks and 84 weeks. So a short cycle of 61 and a long cycle of 84. So what I do is the same as what I did at the beginning of the phasing analysis entry process, is I line up my piece of paper with a date on the chart, and then I mark on this piece of paper each one of those lengths. So 17.9 months is effectively 18 months. You can see that I'm working with a, a very short little period of time here on this piece of paper. So it might be sensible at this point to move down to a weekly chart where we're working with a bigger uh, range of time in terms of the length of time on our piece of paper. You might want to do that, but there is a reason why I'm sticking with the monthly chart. That's because I want to resolve some of the positions of these troughs. So we're going to work with this, even though we're going to be working with fairly small little distances on our piece of paper. So our first length is 17.9 months. That's the nominal length. I label that with the letter N. Then we have a short cycle of 61 weeks and a longer cycle of 84 weeks. So 61 weeks is one year plus nine weeks, which is about uh, two months. So we're going to put a mark over there. That's my initial cyclic period. And then I've got 84 weeks, which is a year plus 32 weeks. And uh, so what we're going to do is place that uh, position just about over there. It's not very accurate, as you can see. It's uh, working fairly manually. The idea is just to get an idea of in what range of time we can expect those cycle troughs to have formed. Then what we do is we choose a color. Now, I normally use yellow for the 18-month cycle. That's a personal choice, but uh, it doesn't show up very well on this white paper, so I'm going to use brown for this 18-month cycle. I hope that doesn't distract too much. And the first thing that you do is you take all the diamonds that you have found in your longer cycle, and you simply transfer them down. So you draw a diamond underneath each one of the diamonds that you have confirmed. And where you have question marks, you would simply draw a question mark. So let's work with both of these analyses. We'll switch between them. So I put the question marks below those question marks. There we go. So I've transferred that longer cycle down. And now the phasing analysis extension process uh, starts uh, really happening. What we do is we line up our piece of paper as we did in the phasing analysis entry process with each one of the troughs that we have confirmed and we see if we can identify a cycle roughly within range of the time that is shown by the marks on our piece of paper. So here, if I line it up with the left-hand edge uh, on that cycle, you see we look up here, there are a few possibilities there and there somewhere there's clearly a bit of a cycle trough forming. It's not really clear enough, so I move on. I just simply I just simply move on to the next one. Also, that is the left-hand most trough in my entire analysis, and I'm not really very convinced, as you can see from this circle that's been drawn over there. I'm not very convinced about the placement of that cycle trough. 
So let's move on and let's move backwards. So the trick with this is you move forwards and backwards from each confirmed trough. So now I'm going to move backwards from here, line up my piece of paper like that, and I say, can I find a good prominent trough? Well, indeed, there are two of them there and there. And let's have a look which one of those seems to be the most likely. Well, this one over here is really within my range of time. This one is a little bit later, which means it's probably the trough of a different cycle. So I'm feeling quite good about that. So I'm going to position a brown diamond over there. Having positioned that brown diamond over there, I can then move backwards from that diamond. And so again, I line up my strip of paper. That's with the trough there. And if I move backwards, then clearly the range of time that I'm looking at is that range of time over there. So I'm going to confirm that trough over there as another trough of the 18 month cycle. So I mark that one as well with a diamond. So now I found my three 18 month cycles that need to exist within that 54 month cycle. Then what I do is I take my piece of paper and I put a little pencil mark I line up the edge of paper with the diamond and I put a little pencil mark for each one of those cycles. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm building up a visual representation, if you like, of the average length of each one of those cycles. And then what we do is we carry on going and we line up our piece of paper with each one of the longer cycle troughs that we have identified. We work forwards and backwards from each one of those troughs and we identify the troughs of the shorter cycle. Okay, so let's move forward and I place the left hand edge of my piece of paper on that trough of the 54 month cycle. I look up above my cluster of pencil marks and I see a very clear trough over there that looks perfectly positioned. And so I'm going to confirm that trough as a trough of the 18 month cycle. And I mark my piece of paper with that trough over there. Now that I've confirmed that trough, I can look forward from that trough and look at this sort of cluster over here. There's that possible trough there, which could be a trough of the 18 month cycle or that possible trough. Either one of them is possible. So what I could do is I could simply position two question marks over there or seeing as I have a 54 month cycle trough uh, over here in 2007, I can measure back from that trough by turning my piece of paper upside down and I see which one of these two troughs seems most likely. So we have an interesting situation. Uh, this trough is right on the one end of the scale and this trough is on the other end of the scale. I would say probably the most likely one is this trough over here. And so I'm going to position my diamond over there. Okay, what we could also do if you don't want to position a diamond is you could leave two question marks there. So let's do that. Let's just rub out that diamond and I'm going to position a question mark there and a question mark there because I don't know which one of those is most likely to be the 18 month cycle. Now we position our piece of paper over here and do we see any troughs over here? Yes, in fact, this is very big trough right exactly on the end mark, the nominal cyclic model mark. So therefore, I'm definitely going to confirm that as a trough of the 18 month cycle. And now when I look forward from that trough, do I see any other troughs within range of my marks on my piece of paper? Yes, definitely that trough there. So that's therefore going to be my next 18 month cycle. And again, here we have a situation where we've been able to fulfill the extension process simply by moving forwards. Uh, what we could also do is turn our piece of paper upside down, line it up with that trough and ask ourselves, do we see a trough in that range of time and of course we do over there. Now things are going to get a little uh, interesting and slightly complicated because of what's happened since 2011 which is that we've uh, simply gone into a, a, a bull run, a very powerful bull run and so what we do is we line up our piece of paper with that 54 month cycle trough. Now we're looking in this range of time over here. Do we see any troughs over there? Well there is this one which was towards the end of 2012 
and there's possibly this one over here, a tiny trough. So when you're doing the phasing analysis extension process and you don't see an obvious trough, then you simply don't fill that in. You could put some question marks, but I'm, I'm not going to fill that in just yet because what I'm going to do is turn this piece of paper upside down and I'm going to work backwards from this trough over here. So let's bring that down slightly. There we go. I'm working backwards from there. And do I see any prominent troughs within that range of time? Well, yes, there's this obvious one over here in 2014. So because that's the only obvious trough, I'm able to mark that with an 18 month diamond. And so now I can work backwards from there and ask myself, which of these two troughs is most likely to be the 18 month cycle trough. So what we could do is we could choose one of them. If we look at that, uh, that cluster of pencil marks, I hope that you can see it clearly enough. If we look at that cluster of pencil marks, there are these two troughs here, which are possible candidates. Both of them are within range of the, the cluster of pencil marks. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply fill in another two question marks over there. So now we have completed the 18 month cycle in our phasing analysis extension. You might say, but we've got all kinds of question marks. We haven't confirmed the position of all of those troughs. And that is the beauty of the phasing analysis extension process, that you don't have to confirm all of your troughs as you're working through your cycles, because the extension process uh, is, is an iterative process. It feeds back upon itself. And so by moving to the shorter and shorter cycles, we are going to be able to resolve the positions of those troughs by finding the shorter cycle troughs. It's a very important aspect of this entire process. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to our next cycle, which of course, if we look at our initial cyclic model, is the 40 week cycle over here. And what we're going to do now is move on to the weekly chart. So print out your weekly chart and pull it up. If you are working with uh, your own charts, not the downloaded charts, then just a few points uh, about this chart. The first one is that Hearst always worked with 180 bars on his charts, because in those days the charts were in fact hand drawn and uh, they worked with chart paper and he always worked with 180 bars on his uh, chart paper. And so um, purely for sort of historical reasons, I have always stuck with that. I don't know if there's anything magical about the number 180, but uh, I've always performed this process on charts with 180 bars. And so if you count the bars, you'll see there are 180 weeks on this particular chart. Uh, if you're printing your own charts, then I'd recommend you work with 180 bars. Of course, you can go as far back as you like. There's no reason why you need to stick with 180 weeks uh, or days when we get to the daily chart. Uh, but I do, uh, purely for uh, historical reasons or perhaps sentimental reasons, who knows. So uh, the other thing to, of course, be aware of if you're printing your own charts is to make sure that you've left enough room at the foot of the chart for the uh, drawing of your phasing analysis as you work. So again, the first thing you do in the phasing analysis extension process is you transfer your longer cycle troughs down. So uh, here is our longer cycle analysis, our, our longer chart analysis, our monthly chart. So what we're going to do is first of all, transfer those longer cycles down. So we're going to start with the 54 month cycle. And so that 54 month cycle I have positioned in this particular analysis here at the beginning in the beginning of 2016. So I draw my diamond for the 54 month cycle. And the previous 54 month cycle was in 2011, which doesn't even feature on this chart. Okay, so we're not going to bother with that. Now let's transfer our 18 month cycle troughs onto this chart. There is a synchronous one there, of course, in 2016. And then we found another one in late 2014 to be a trough of the 18 month cycle as well. So therefore I position a diamond over there. And uh, what about the troughs before that? Well, if we look at our monthly chart, you can see we had some question marks over here. So the interesting thing about this process is now that I'm working on the weekly chart, I've, I've moved on. I'm not really bothering about, uh, you know, which one of those two 18 month question marks might be the 18 month cycle. And 
there's an important point to make here because that's what the analysis process is, is often about, is that you don't actually resolve the positions of the troughs. You might be saying to me, but surely that affects your average wavelength. Surely this is very important. Doesn't it matter that I haven't confirmed the position of that particular trough? Well, it doesn't really matter. And the reason is because either here or here, there is a trough of the 18-month cycle. It could be either one of them. When we are averaging our cycle wavelength, it doesn't matter which one of them is the 18-month cycle trough. We're going to end up with the same result. And if you don't understand that, then I'd encourage you to work out the average wavelengths and try, try um, both positions for that 18-month cycle. You're going to find out you come up with the same result. Because whatever happens, there must be two 18-month waves within that time period between 2011 and 2014. And where you position the 18-month cycle trough doesn't actually make any difference. So, therefore, we move on uh, with alacrity, as they say, and we simply ignore those question marks that we've left behind us. The phasing analysis extension process, in fact, the entire phasing analysis process, is very much a matter of doing that. You don't have to resolve everything. You don't have to find answers to every single detail. The important thing is we need to get to a point at which we're able to make sensible trading decisions now. But now, before we move on to the next cycle, the 40-week cycle, let's see if we can position another 18-month cycle trough over here. Because, of course, our... 54-month cycle trough we have positioned in February of 2016, and so some time has passed since then. Now, because we're working on a different chart, a weekly chart, we need to make new lines for our 18-month cycle trough. So I'm using my same piece of paper, and I'm measuring off the initial and the nominal model lengths on here. So the uh, expected length is 17.9 months, which is, uh, where, where are we, here we go, just under 18 months, so that's over there, so that's my nominal model length, and then our shorter length was, let's just remind ourselves, our shorter length was 61 weeks, and our longer length was 84 weeks, so again we can count 61 weeks. 61 is of course a year plus nine weeks, so we don't have to be absolutely exact, but we'll position it about over there. So that's our initial cyclic model length, our shorter length over there. And then our longer length is 84 weeks, which is 52 weeks plus 34. So 34 is uh, how many months is that? That's about eight and a half months. So that's going to put us uh, here into sometime in September, I think I'm correct in saying. So that's our other initial cyclic model length. Then, of course, we have all the other pencil marks that we have on this piece of paper from our longer cycle analysis. So if we like, we could be a little bit obsessive and transfer those pencil marks up into this longer range of time. But I don't really bother with that as long as I can see the range of time between the initial cyclic model lengths, including the nominal cyclic model length, the expected length, then I'm good to go. So let's see if we can find ourselves another 18-month cycle trough. So from early in 2016, when our last 18-month cycle trough uh, has been phased on our chart. We look forward and we see that we are expecting the next trough sometime between uh, end of April 2017 up until the uh, end of October 2017. So uh, can we find another 18-month cycle trough uh, on this chart? No, we can't because we haven't reached that time yet. And so we are uh, definitely expecting the market to come down to form an 18-month cycle trough. Um, but of course, remember that because an 18-month cycle trough is about to be formed, does not mean the market is going to be coming down for nine months into that trough. If the longer cycles are bullish, and it certainly looks as though those longer cycles are bullish, doesn't it? You can see the strong bull run that we've had since uh, early 2016, February 2016. If those longer cycles are bullish, then we might only come down for a b very brief period of time into that 18-month cycle trough. So let's move on now to our next cycle, which is, of course, the 40-week cycle. 
and I'm going to get myself another piece of paper and I'm going to do the same process here. I'm going to label this 40 week so that I can come back to these pieces of paper if I need to. And let's take a look at our initial cyclic model. You can see how important this initial cyclic model is. Uh, the importance of the initial spectral analysis that we performed carries all the way through our phasing analysis process. So our expected length is 39 weeks, our shorter length is 31, and our longer is 48. And so um, let's mark that off over here. All right, so uh, 39 weeks, we could actually uh, count the bars if we wanted to. Uh, I'm not uh, going to get uh, that sort of obsessive about it. Let's just move that up a little bit. 39 weeks is just about uh, 10 months and so 10 months would place us over there so let's position our n mark for our nominal model length uh, over there that's uh, 10 months into the year and then our shorter length was 31 weeks so 31 weeks is there we go, 31 weeks is 7 months, I think I'm correct in saying, plus 3 weeks, so uh, almost, eight week, almost 8 months. So let's see if we position that about there. That's our shorter initial cyclic model length, and our longer initial cyclic model length is 48 weeks. So 48 weeks is just 4 weeks short of a year. So we position our other mark over there. Okay, so what we do is we move forwards and backwards from each one of these troughs. So here's our 18-month trough in October of 2014. And we look at the range of time in terms of what we can find. And so there are a few possibilities here. The one is that trough over there. The more obvious one is this trough over here. Okay. Um, we must keep our minds open to possibilities because, of course, we have to make these uh, troughs. We have to make the normal, the the uh, cyclic model, we have to make it work at all levels. So if we work backwards from the trough in February of 2016, turn the piece of paper upside down, you can see our marks don't include this obvious trough over here, but they do include this trough over here. At this point, you could either put two question marks or you could uh, simply confirm the one that seems to fit both possibilities. The one that fits both possibilities is definitely this one here in July of 2015. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to position two question marks here uh, to show you how the phasing analysis extension process resolves those situations. So I've got two question marks for that position. And now if I move forward, let's see if we can find a more recent 40-week cycle trough. I move forward from that one over there. I move the piece of paper up so that I can see clearly what's happening in price. And here you can see very close to our nominal expected length is a trough right over there. So I'm going to mark my, uh, put my pencil mark on the piece of paper there. And then um, I'm going to mark the position of that trough with a diamond. So I've now confirmed that. As a matter of interest, can we position another one? You can just keep moving forward. No, the next 40-week uh, cycle trough, as you can see, is only expected uh, between about June and the end of September this year. So we're definitely looking at a trough happening later in this year. Okay, uh, we can also move backwards, of course, from the uh, previous trough. And uh, sometimes you, I don't even really bother to do this. But if we move backwards from that trough, is there a clear trough that is within range? Yes, there is definitely. It's that one over there in February 2014. And if I mark my piece of paper, that's it over there. You can see, as always, the cluster of pencil marks building up, usually round about the nominal cycle cycle length, and so I'm going to position that um, 40 week cycle trough over there, and I've been using the wrong color, so uh, that was a mistake. This was a 40 week cycle trough that I confirmed over here, so what we do is I use a green color for the 40 week cycle trough, and so I position that over there, and here's the other 40 week cycle trough 
over there. Right, now let's speak about how we can use phasing analysis extension to resolve the position of these question marks. These are not 18 month cycle question marks, they are of course 40 week cycle question marks. Let me just change the color of those. Okay, and so what we do is we step down now to our 20 week cycle, pull up another piece of paper, mark it here with 20 weeks, put our positions in the right place, our initial pencil marks, 20 weeks, we're looking at 19.5 weeks, so 19.5 weeks is just about uh, five months, so that's one, two, three, four, so that's five months over there, and so 19.5 weeks would be uh, just about over there and then at the shorter length on our initial cyclic model we've got 114 days and 146 days so 114 days is about uh, three months plus about uh, what about uh, 25 days or almost four months so I'm going to therefore place that over there that's my initial length that's my nominal length and then 146 days is just about one, two, three, four, five months. And uh, it's just a little bit longer than that, so I'm going to put a mark over there. Okay, you can see you don't have to be very, very accurate it's just to give us an idea of what range of time we're expecting. Okay, so. Now what we can do is start positioning our 20-week cycle troughs. So let's first of all resolve this question mark that we have over here. And so I'm going to place my piece of paper over there lined up with that confirmed trough. And now I've got a few possibilities. I'm going to mark that and that as possible troughs of the 20-week cycle. Now here with the question marks, I can't really do anything just yet. So what I do is I work backwards from here and I line up that edge of the piece of paper over there and I look at what's happening over here. So now this particular trough over there is just a little bit outside of my range. It's just slightly long. So we need to think quite carefully about this. Is it possible that this trough here, which is actually more within the range of my pencil marks, is the real 20-week cycle? And maybe this one here uh, wasn't. Perhaps that was just a little bit of um, a fundamental interaction. There was a news event or something like that that caused the markers to swing wildly. That is certainly possible. So what we do is we don't position a diamond under either one of those uh, just yet. But what we do is we work in the other direction. So now let me get the right color this time so that I'm not really confusing things. Let me add another question mark over there for the 20 week cycle trough. And now let's move forwards from this position. Now uh, here you can see that we have these possible cycles within the range of the 20 week cycle. So uh, this one over here, I'm going to put a question mark there for the 20 week cycle, and I'm going to put a question mark there for the 20 week cycle. Now I haven't filled in the 40 week cycle diamond, I must do that. There's the 40 week cycle diamond that goes under there. Okay, so uh, those are possible positions for our 20 week cycle. So what we've ended up with uh, would seem to be just a whole lot of question marks. So definitely this period of time is a fairly uh, difficult uh, time to analyze correctly. So how do we resolve this? Well, somewhere within this range of time, we expect one 40-week cycle trough. Uh, but we also expect one, two, three 20-week cycle troughs. So, uh, as you can see, we have got some question marks here for the 20-week cycle trough. 
So what we can do is we can work with those question marks. So if I line up my piece of paper with this first question mark, which is that one over there, then I look up here and see whether I can see a clear trough, which would be the next 20-week cycle trough. Of course, the next 20-week cycle trough will also be the 40-week cycle trough. And there, indeed, is a very good clear trough. Okay, it's that one over there, which is indeed one of our question marks. So I'm going to give that, uh, you know, a sort of a, a plus one because I, I quite like the position of that trough for my 20-week cycle. And if I move backwards from my possible troughs over here, these question marks, then I end up with this range over here. And so here is a, here is a possible trough over there and there is a possible trough over there. So again, we've got uh, simply more and more question marks that are sprouting on our chart. So what do we do? How do we resolve that? Well, at some point, we need to actually simply make a decision. And what you will notice happening at the foot of these charts is you'll see some question marks for the 20-week cycle, and then you'll see a little cluster of question marks for the 40-week cycle. So, uh, one of the simplest ways of resolving this is to say, okay, I need one 40-week cycle in that period of time, and I need three 20-week cycles. So, uh, clearly the first 20-week cycle must be somewhere on the left-hand edge here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply choose the most obvious one, and I'm going to position a 20-week diamond. Right, now that I have a 20-week diamond, I can start making a few more uh, sort of firm decisions. Position my piece of paper lined up with that diamond and I know therefore I'm looking at this range of time over here. So let's speak about this range of time over here uh, very quickly. We're looking for a 40-week cycle trough in that time and you might be saying but none of those troughs look very good, none of them look very valid, why are they all so small? Surely the 40-week trough must be the one that comes after it, this one over here. Uh, but let me remind you about the M shapes that are made in cycles, uh, by cycles in the market. You get a big move up, move down, and I've, I've exaggerated it there in that M shape that I've drawn. But this is why you are, do often get fairly prominent troughs that are very subtle in the market. You know, we could distort that M shape even more get a little bit of a move down, bit of a move up and up again, and that central trough there would be the trough of the larger cycle. So it's not impossible that one of these troughs is the trough of the larger cycle. Uh, so which one do we choose? Well, I've positioned one diamond here for the 20-week cycle. As you can see, uh, let's just come back and see if we can uh, be a little more clear about the 20-week cycle uh, trough over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually position the 20-week cycle trough over here. So now I've got two 20-week cycle troughs. Now we could debate this, we could say, oh, but it should really be over there. Let me remind you again that whether it's here or here it doesn't really make very much difference to us now in 2017. We're looking back about 18 months and uh, the exact position of that 20-week cycle doesn't make very much difference. We could argue the finer details, but the point is that in terms of the average wavelength that we're going to calculate, we're going to come up with the same number, no matter where we position that particular trough. So now that I have positioned those two troughs, uh, the simplest thing to do is actually just to go di directly in the middle of them and look upwards and say, is one of these troughs here potentially the 40-week cycle trough? So I'm actually just going to say, yes, that little trough over there is the 40-week cycle trough, and therefore I can position the 40-week cycle uh, trough over there. Okay? And let's now continue with our 20-week cycle trough placement. Of course, we could work backwards. And if you're a slightly obsessive analyst, as I tend to be, then you know you want to go back and you want to complete the 20-week cycle uh, all the way back to the left-hand edge of your chart. The important thing you must remember, always bear in mind, is we're doing this so that we can make sensible de trading decisions now. And uh, you know the where the position of the 20-week cycle trough was in 2014 isn't really very important to me right now. I'm going to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward from 
the 40-week cycle trough that we have in February of 2016. I'm going to ask myself, can I see a good clear trough near my expected wavelength? Well, yes, I can. Where's my pencil? Here we go. Uh, it's that trough right over there if I'm reading that chart correctly. And uh, so there we go, we can position the 20-week cycle trough. And again, I haven't actually copied my diamonds down. You must always remember to copy your diamonds down for the 20-week cycle. Okay, there we go, I've copied all my diamonds down. And now let's move forward and ask ourselves, can we see another 20-week cycle trough? Since the most recent trough, which is this uh, trough over here, uh, the 40-week cycle trough, um, where was that? That was sort of the beginning of November 2016. So we move forward, we move our little piece of paper up there, and we're just entering the period of time. Can you see that? Uh, let me move it down a little bit. We're just entering the period of time in which we are expecting a 20-week cycle trough. Okay. So uh, the answer to that question is quite simply a no. Uh, we probably haven't seen a 20-week cycle trough yet, but we are entering the period of time in which we are expecting a 20-week cycle trough. So let's now move on and start speaking about our next cycle, which is our 20-week cycle. So here again, we're going to change charts and we're going to move on to our daily chart. So pull up your daily chart, which you hopefully have printed out. Or if you haven't printed out the daily chart uh, that you have downloaded, then uh, you will want to create your own daily chart. Now, there are just two important points to make about the daily chart. Uh, first of all, I have again chosen a length of 180 bars for my chart. I do that really for sentimental reasons, because that's what Hearst did, and that's how I started working, and that's what I'm used to is working with a 180 bar chart. The other really important thing about this chart is you will notice that there are no weekends in the chart, by which I mean, of course, that there is no, uh, there are no bars plotted on the weekends, but there are gaps on the chart. So in fact, I expressed that incorrectly. I should say there are weekends on the chart because the weekends have been plotted as empty spaces on this chart. You can see all the weekends. Here we go. And there's, there's a, a period of time where there were some holidays. Okay, so all the holidays have been plotted on the chart. Why is that? It's because of a very important thing. Hearst's original principles define the action of cycles over time, whether we are trading or not. Now, we could debate this, and there is a lot of debate about whether this is important or whether it isn't. But if we're going to actually practice Hearst cycles in the way that he originally defined them, which is what we're doing here, then, uh, of course, you need to have a chart which includes weekends. In other words, it has gaps in it. So there are periods of time where the weekend happened or where the holidays happen. Because even though we weren't trading at those times, the cycles that influenced the markets uh, probably were still moving. And so they need to be on your chart. OK, so let's assume that you have a chart that has 180 bars, a daily chart. Of course, you can use more bars if you like. I like to work with 180 bars. It helps me to focus on what's happening at the moment rather than spending too much time thinking about what happened, uh, you know, a year ago, which might not really affect my trading today. And let's assume that your chart also has gaps for over the weekend. So in other words, we are counting the weekend bars. That's something that could be debated, but we won't bother doing that uh, just at the moment. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that you need to have some blank space at the foot of your chart to draw your analysis. So the first thing we do is we transfer the information from our previous chart. Where's our previous chart? Here we go, our weekly chart. We transfer the phasing analysis information from that chart onto our daily chart. And in fact, there isn't very much information to transfer, as you can see, because all that we have done so far is position a 40-week cycle trough over here in the uh, beginning of November of last year. So that's our 40-week cycle trough. And then we don't have any other information. We have an 80-day cycle trough back in July, but that doesn't appear on this chart. So let's uh, start moving down to our next shorter cycle. So our next shorter cycle is, of course, the 20-week cycle. And there's all these colors. So here's our 20-week cycle. That, of course, was also synchronous. It formed a synchronous trough here in early November. And we have already established that we cannot 
confirm the position of another 20-week cycle. We are, of course, expecting price to move down into a 20-week cycle at some point, uh, but we don't know whether that has happened. So now let's move on to our 80-day cycle, which is our next cycle. And so there's our 80-day synchronous 80-day cycle trough that also formed in November. So again, we get a piece of paper and this is our 80-day cycle. So we write here 80 day and we take a look at our initial cyclic model. We're still referring to that initial cyclic model. We refer to it all the way through our analysis process. And the 80-day cycle, the average length is 68.2 days, which is why it is often called the 10-week uh, cycle. And so fortunately this chart has grid lines on on the weeks, so I can count weeks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's uh, 70 days, so 68 days is just a little bit short of that. So that's my nominal cycle length. Our expected length is 68.2 days. Our shorter cycle length could be anyone, anywhere from 51 days all the way up to 76 days. So let's mark 51 days. 51 days would be seven weeks plus two days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven plus two days. So that's my shorter initial cyclic model. And my longer initial cyclic model is 76 days. So that's 11 weeks less one day. So that's over here. So you can see that the initial cyclic model is definitely showing us that we are expecting cycles to be on the shorter side. Just a, an important little side note, expect cycles to be shorter uh, rather than longer because of the results of our spectral analysis. So the first thing we do is we move forward from this confirmed trough over here, slide our piece of paper up, keep it in line with that trough. Do we see any troughs within range to form our 80-day cycle? Yes, there's clearly this one over here, which is a nice prominent one. We could debate these other troughs, but this is the one that really stands out for me, which is uh, right at the end of December in uh, uh, of last year, in December 2016. So let me confirm that as a trough of the 80-day cycle. I'm putting my mark on my piece of paper, and I get my colored pencil, and I position the 80-day cycle trough over there. Now, can we find another 80-day cycle trough? Well, let's measure from that trough over there, and let's see in which range of time we were expecting the next 80-day cycle trough. Well, as you can see, we were expecting it any time from about the third week of February um, all the way forward to sometime uh, in about the middle of March. That's when we're expecting the next 80-day cycle trough. So can we position it here? No, we can't yet because we haven't seen enough price action. Uh, it is possible, unlikely, but it's just possible that that little tiny trough that formed over there is the 80-day cycle trough because certainly it would sort of fit in with our um, previous cycle lengths, but we haven't even reached our nominal cycle length yet. So, so the answer there is, is uh, almost certainly no, we haven't yet seen the next 80-day cycle trough. So uh, we don't do anything uh, just at the moment. What we do is we simply move forward to our next cycle. We could turn this piece of paper upside down and move backwards. If you're a slightly obsessive analyst, you might want to do that. You might want to fill in previous 80-day cycle troughs uh, over there, but I'm not going to bother because what I'm interested in uh, at the moment is focusing on uh, what's happening right now. So we're going to move on and we're going to next move to our 40-day cycle. So here's our 40-day cycle, and of course we do exactly the same thing. We look at our nominal cycle length, our expected cycle length for the 40-day cycle is 34.1 days. So that's um, one day short of, of um, how many weeks is that? Five weeks. So that's one, two, three, four, five weeks short one day. So we're going to put our nominal mark over there. And our initial cyclic model gave us a length of 28 days, which is exactly four weeks. So that's our initial cyclic model. And our longer initial cyclic model is 36 days, which is just actually two days longer than our nominal length. So that's over there. So we're looking at a fairly tight cluster there for the 40-day cycle. So what we do is we again move forward from a known trough, and we see if we can see a 
clearly defined trough within that range of time. I can see one right over there. In fact, it's such a clearly defined trough, I'm going to mark it immediately. And it's right there within our range of time. Uh, so what color should I use here for this cycle? Uh, let me use this blue color over here. And of course, I should transfer my troughs down. So uh, these are those are very similar colors. Uh, let me just use a, a let me use a brown color just to differentiate them, so that you can know which cycle you're looking at. So that's a 40-day cycle trough. That's another 40-day cycle trough. And here we go. We've just found another one, which is over here. So that's our 40-day cycle trough. Now we need to look forward and say, can we find another 40-day cycle trough? And if we look at the pencil marks on our piece of paper, indeed we can. And I would call that the 40-day cycle trough. You could argue that somewhere over here is maybe the 40-day cycle trough, but that would be a bit early. Um, maybe it occurred over here a little bit late. Uh, often the simplest answer, the most obvious answer is the correct one. So I'm going to position the 40-day cycle trough over there, uh, which means that I draw a 40-day cycle trough diamond over there. Now let's see if we can move forward again and identify our next 40-day cycle trough. You can see our next 40-day cycle trough is expected round about now. Can we position it? Well, no, because we haven't seen a trough form yet. Okay, a trough means that price needs to, you know, price needs to bounce back out of it. It needs to come down into it and bounce back out of it. So far, we've seen price coming down into it. We haven't seen it bouncing back out of it. So, um, having identified the troughs of the twenty of the forty-day cycle, we then move on to the twenty-day cycle. And I'm going to speed up here because you, I'm sure, are very familiar with this process by now so you're already doing your own phasing analysis extensions uh, so the 20 day cycle um, we're looking at an average length of 17 days which is three weeks less four days and that's the nominal length i don't have any initial cyclic models uh, for the 20 uh, day cycle so I don't really need to worry about um, that because, uh, as you'll see, when we get to the 20-day cycle, it's not really terribly important. So let's see if we can find a 20-day cycle trough here. Can we? No, not really. So let's move backwards from that 40-day cycle trough. Can we see a 20-day cycle trough here? Yes, here. So I'm going to simply position that 20-day uh, cycle trough. Let's use the purple color for 20 days. Um, and of course, I must copy my diamonds down, copy them down, there we go. And what about my next 20 day cycle trough? Well, I move forward, work with my piece of paper and see if I can identify the next cycle trough, 20 day cycle trough. And there are two possibilities, as you can see over there. And if I measure backwards from this trough, this is a process that by now I'm sure you've grasped very clearly. You can see that of those two possibilities, it is really only this one over here that could uh, really be the 20 day cycle trough. And so we position a diamond underneath that trough uh, over there. All right, uh, then we move forward and find our next 20 day cycle trough. So we move forward from this 80-day cycle trough that we identified at the end of December 2016. We see what troughs we have available to us there. We have one, two, three possible candidates. Uh, not very good clear troughs, to be honest, but if we turn our piece of paper upside down and have a look at which one of those fits most closely, working backwards from the 40-day cycle trough in early February, of this year you can see this one here is the only one that is exactly exactly on our uh, on our nominal cycle length our expected length so i'm going to position the 20-day cycle trough diamond over there now very importantly we move forward and we see from our most recent 40-day cycle trough we see whether we can find another 20-day cycle trough and indeed we should do because you can see how much time has elapsed we're approaching now our next 40-day uh, cycle 
trough, uh, which is also, of course, going to be the 80-day cycle, and the 20-week cycle trough. So we should find another 20-day cycle trough here. But if you have a look, you can see the market has been in a really strong bull run over there. So we, we can uh, make an effort to identify that trough. There really aren't very many candidates except for this one over here. And so that is most probably our final 20-day cycle trough that we can identify. And if we look forward from that trough to see where the next one is going to occur, you will see that it is expected to occur uh, from about the middle of the week starting on the 13th of March. And uh, so it is expected fairly soon. We're expecting the market to move down into the next 20-day cycle trough. Of course, that is also going to be the uh, synchronous 40-day cycle trough, the 80-day cycle trough, and the 20-week cycle trough, according to this analysis, assuming that we haven't uh, made any errors uh, in the course of this analysis. So that is what we're expecting. And at that point, we have pretty much completed the phasing analysis extension process. So at this point, we would now move on to our phasing analysis completion stage, which is the next stage of the phasing analysis process, because we have completed the phasing analysis extension. But before you all rush off and do your phasing analysis extension on your charts, I would like to loop back to something we mentioned at the beginning of this series of videos, which has to do with the way in which the phasing analysis extension process can be used to resolve ambiguities that you have as a result of an incomplete phasing analysis entry. Not really incomplete, but, but things that you haven't resolved, question marks that you have on your chart. So let's come back to this alternate phasing analysis entry that we had right up at the beginning. And let's go back to the 18-month process, which I didn't actually complete on this chart. So what we've done is we have transferred our 54-month cycle troughs down to the 18-month level. And now we can use this 18-month piece of paper to work out where we can find other 18-month cycle troughs. But now in this part of the process, I'm going to throw some new ideas at you. Things that might shock the purists amongst us because they are not strictly speaking Hearst ideas. But I hope you find them interesting. They are things that I have picked up uh, over the years in terms of the way in which cycles uh, really work in the markets. And they require a few bending of the rules or perhaps just a bit of questioning of some of the rules. So the first uh, idea that I would like to mention is the idea of your confidence in the analysis. I speak about your level of confidence or my level of confidence in an analysis. Now here we've only performed a phasing analysis entry, but we have some fairly big question marks. Uh, it's fairly obvious, I think, if we have a look at this chart, that here we have a really big trough in 2009 and beneath it we have a question mark. Okay, so that means that we've got something quite big happening which we're not able to resolve. We can resolve it, as I will show you in a moment, by using the phasing analysis extension process. But I would first of all like to ask a question, which is, what is my level of confidence in this analysis? Am I confident in the 54-month cycle placement? And because of that big question mark and because of these question marks around these troughs, I've got to say I'm not actually confident. No. So I'm not confident in the 54-month cycle. Let's work out what cycle I am confident in. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step down to the 18-month cycle. Now, this really big trough over here in 2009, what is my confidence level in that trough? We've already established that I'm not confident in it definitely being a trough of the 54-month cycle. And I know there are some people that agree with me and some that disagree with me. That's not really very important at the moment. Uh, all that is important for me is that I'm not really confident in that 54-month cycle trough in that position. So what is that trough definitely? You know, it's definitely a five-day cycle trough, obviously. It's definitely a 40-week cycle trough. Is it definitely an 18-month cycle trough? So I use my piece of paper and I look to the right and I see whether there are any conflicting troughs within, uh, uh, you know, with, well within the range of an 18-month cycle trough. 
and there uh, aren't either before or afterwards it's fairly obvious so therefore I can definitely place a diamond there for an 18 month cycle trough so here we've got a really big trough on the chart and my level of confidence in that trough is definitely 18 months in other words I'm convinced that that must be an 18 month cycle trough if somebody came to me and said, oh, I think that might just be a 20-day or a 40-day trough or an 80-day trough, I would say, no, no, I'm convinced that's an 18-month cycle trough. So that's my level of confidence, not only in that trough, but actually in this analysis. So moving forward, I have a confidence in this analysis, which is at the 18-month level. Now, for me personally, that's absolutely fine. I'm very happy to trade on the basis of confidence up to 18 months. Some of you might be looking at much longer time frames, and uh, you know you really want to have confidence in the four and a half year cycle or the nine year cycle, maybe. But for me, an 18-month level of confidence is absolutely fine. So how would we use phasing analysis extension to resolve these question marks? Right, well, let's do that. First of all, we have confidence in this trough over here in 2002 as being a trough of 54, month cycle, 54 months, a trough of the 54-month cycle, uh, also, of course, a trough of the 18-month cycle. And we have confidence in this trough here in 2016 as also being at least 18 months, uh, probably 54 months. Now that I've actually come out and said I'm only confident up to a level of 18 months. I'm going to stop worrying too much about where those 54-month cycle troughs are. We can resolve that in a moment. What I'm instead going to do is I'm going to look at the 18-month cycle, cycle and work out where the troughs are for that cycle. First of all, the period of time between 2002 and end of 2015 is 13 years. How many 18-month cycles are we expecting to find? Well, uh, we're expecting to find uh, nine 18-month cycles because, of course, we were expecting to find three 54-month cycles within that period. Okay, three 54-month cycles equals nine 18-month cycles. So we're expecting to find nine 18-month cycles. What we're going to do is we're going to simply perform the phasing analysis extension process and see which cycles we can actually identify. So we take our piece of paper with the 18 month cycle marks on it and we do the standard process and we see if we can identify our 18 month cycle troughs. So indeed there is one over there and that looks very good. It's right in the center of our cluster. So I'm going to mark it over here with a diamond. I move forward from that trough. Can I find another trough? Well, there are two potential candidates, so I'm not going to confirm either one of those. Then what I do is I turn my piece of paper over and I move backwards from this trough over here, which I've just explained is definitely an 18-month cycle trough. And within that cluster of pencil marks over there, uh, there is this trough over there, which looks very prominent and so I'm going to confirm that as well. So uh, therefore I've drawn another two 18-month cycle diamonds over there at the foot of the chart and there must be another 18-month cycle in between them. So now when you have a situation like this um, we can move backwards and it could be either this one or that one and we can move uh, forwards from this trough over here and again it could be this one or this one does it matter it doesn't really matter so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose one and I'm going to put a diamond under it okay so that makes that an 18 month cycle trough whether it really is that one or whether it's the other one doesn't matter the point is one of those is an 18 month cycle trough I hope that that's, um, that's clear to you. All right, so now let's move forward from this position over here and let's see what we have. Well, we have a clear trough over there, which looks pretty good for an 18 month cycle trough. So I'm going to put a diamond over there as well and I'm going to move forward again. Now here we have an interesting situation. We have a fairly obvious trough over here, but it's, it's very sort of early. And then we have another trough over there, which also fits in. So I'm going to put a circle there and a circle there. Again, we have a very similar situation. We have two possible troughs. One of them is an 18-month cycle trough. Uh, the other one probably isn't. Do we need to resolve that just yet? No, we don't. So what we're going to do is move backwards from this trough over here. Let's see if we can find an 18-month cycle trough. There is one over there, so I'm going to put another diamond 
over there. Now, we've got a big expanse from about the middle of 2010 to about the middle of 2014, or it's a little bit after the middle of 2014. So that's a period of about four years. Okay, so what are we going to do about that? How are we going to resolve that? Well, in that period of four years, we would expect to find two cycle, two 18 month cycle troughs, okay, three waves. So what I'm going to do is see if I can find some. And so there's one somewhere here. It might be that one, we don't know. And where else will we find one? Well, it's either one of these two. So it's either this one here and this one here. And then there's definitely another one over there. So what I'm going to do for now is to simply put diamonds at the most obvious places. Okay. So now we can count our 18 month cycles that we have the number of waves. All right. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. We have our nine waves, which is what we expected to find of our 18 month cycle. So let's uh, have a look at how that helps us to resolve our 54 month cycle analysis. Well, every three 18 month cycle troughs, we would expect to find a 54 month cycle trough. So therefore that's a 54 month cycle trough. And over here is the next 54 month cycle trough. And then here in early 2016 is the next 54 month cycle trough. Can you see how the phasing analysis extension process by simply ignoring the 54 month cycle temporarily and identifying the troughs of the 18 month cycle has helped us to resolve the position of that 18 month of that 54 month cycle uh, resolve the positions of the 54 month cycle troughs that's the way in which phasing analysis extension is very useful to help us to resolve the issues that were left unresolved the ambiguous positions of the troughs in the phasing analysis entry process and that's the real value of the phasing analysis extension process it's a very important part of the process but now I mentioned I'm going to throw a few new ideas at you. Uh, the one new idea that I would quite like to explore just for a moment is uh, based on the fact that we don't have confidence in the 54 month cycle. I only have confidence in the 18 month cycle and I'm very happy to work with that. I'm going to keep going with the 18 month cycle and in my analysis I'm going to say well I know that's definitely 18 months. It might be 54 months but it's definitely 18 months. And that's fine for me in terms of the trading that I perform, which is fairly short term trading. So, um, but now what about this 54 month cycle? How does this really, you know, how does this really sort of fit in with things? Well, uh, is it possible that actually the nominal model that we're working with is not really correct? Is it possible that something slightly different is happening? And I would like to propose this idea. You can take it or leave it. I'd like to uh, highlight this period of time between 2009 and 2012. So let's measure this uh, uh, time from the trough in 2009, March 2009, up to this trough here. Okay, that trough over there, which happened in about the middle of 2012. That is three years. All right. So here we have an interesting situation because we have three years. Three years is two times 18 months. Okay. Three years equals two times 18 months. Okay. But if we have a look at the price movement during that period of time, do you notice how we have one? two, three waves. It's fairly clear. Okay, you've got to move up, down, move up, down, move up, down. We have uh, three waves that occurred during that 18 month period of time. Now, 
working with our Hearst cycles, our Hearst nominal model, we know that we're expecting two 40-week cycles within that 18-month cycle. And you can see within each one of those 18-month cycles, and you can see that here at the foot of the chart, I've positioned the 18-month cycle over here in 2010 and here in 2011. And then we've got a, a, a long cycle, which is almost two years, taking us to 2013. This kind of situation is often going to appear in your analysis, and I'd just like to plant the seed of an idea at the moment. What if, in fact, uh, we should have phased the 18-month cycle over here in 2012? Okay, let me just draw that diamond there and put it up there. And then what actually happened between 2009 and 2012 is that we saw three cycles within a three-year period. So we're really questioning the nominal model here. And I'm uh, raising the idea, you've probably realized by now, of a dynamic nominal model, one which changes. This is an idea that, that I believe uh, happens. And uh, I believe that instead of forcing two 18-month cycles rather awkwardly into that period of time, it works much better to simply say, OK, well, at the moment, the cycles are beating with a slightly different rhythm. And uh, we have three one-year cycles within that three-year period. At the end of the day, um, you know, we still have a cycle with a trough uh, every three years, which is what would happen over two 18-month periods. I hope that makes sense. It's an interesting idea that I thought I would just um, plant in your minds because I'm sure that it's an idea that you can uh, work with and run with. Uh, as a matter of interest, it's something that particularly happens intraday. I believe fairly strongly in a dynamic nominal model on an intraday basis. And so you'll often get different harmonic ratios between the cycles. Uh, so that really concludes the phasing analysis extension process. I hope you can see in this little demonstration how using phasing analysis extension helps you to resolve questions about your longer cycles. It may also raise other uh, really quite interesting questions about the longer cycles, but I'll leave you to explore those ideas uh, on your own. Uh, there we go. Thank you very much for um, sitting through... Uh the entire webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, as Robert says, um, Bruce Lee would say it's a broken rhythm. Yes, indeed. I think that the cycle rhythms that we are analyzing in the markets um, are certainly very dynamic. I don't know about them getting broken, but they are dynamic and they do change. And uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting subtlety about Hearst's cyclic principles. Many people, when they first approach Hearst cycles, um, consider Hearst cycles as being very static because we work with a nominal model, which is, which is fixed. And everybody says, well, because you're working with a nominal model, it must be a very fixed approach to the markets. But in fact, nothing could be further from the truth because um, Hearst's principles enable us to perform an analysis, as I hope you're seeing through this manual analysis process. We're able to perform an analysis that is actually very dynamic. Uh, another question many people ask is, is how short is too short for a particular cycle? Or how long is too long for a particular cycle? And you might notice in performing this manual process, uh, in fact, that question doesn't really come up. You know, we, we haven't ever really said, is that too short? Is that too long? Because we're using uh, uh, the manual process and we're using the tremendous capacity of the human brain to... Uh, recognize patterns, but not just recognize patterns, to deal with subtleties uh, which present themselves uh, in a visual way. And when you start trying to apply hard mathematics to the process, uh, of course you have to start uh, coming up with some limits. Uh, but performing the process manually gives you a real feel, I believe, for how these cycles breathe, how they expand and contract, and how dynamic the process really is. So on that note, I'm going to thank you very much for being with me today. I look forward to seeing you to our next webinar in which uh, we are going to be moving on to the next stage of the manual phasing analysis process. Thank you very much for being with me. I wish you profitable trading over the next while and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.